Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the new Vermintide 2 career, which is the Necromancer for Sienna, and the final career release for the game. It's been a long time coming for this one, with Fashark working on Darktide alongside other content updates for Vermintide 2, and while this should have come out a lot sooner after Warrior Priest or during the 7 years of Tide to capitalize on the event and the popularity of the game at the time, it's nice to finally see it out for the world to see and it has exceeded my expectations. Over the last few days, I've been playtesting and was given early access to the Korea, courtesy of Fast Shark, so big shout out to them for giving me this opportunity. I'll be giving an overview of the class alongside the new weapons, giving positives and negatives of the class, as well as a critique on a talent that I dislike and could use some love. One final note is that all the gameplay scene is recorded on Legend difficulty only, no Cataclysm or anything below Legend, in case anyone's wondering. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's start with her abilities and combat kit first. The Necromancer's passive ability is Malediction of Nagash, which turns Sienna's flames blue and causes enemies affected by it to deal 20% additional damage from Sienna and her skeletons. This applies to all of her staves and damage over time effects, and makes elite killing relatively easier thanks to the buff applied to her own minions, which keeps her scaled up, especially on Legend and Cataclysm. The perks consist of Mistress of Death, which gives her commanding capabilities for her skeletons to either attack or defend while also releasing them to ventilate overcharge. Life Taker, possibly one of the strongest perks in the game. Killing an enemy grants 2% crit for 4 seconds and can stack up to 5 times. Insane against hordes, patrols and grouped up enemies, and provides a subtle DPS boost, which combined with one of her level 10 talents makes chopping up hordes light work, which I'll go over later. Lastly, we have Cold Flames, which makes Sienna's damage over time effects last 100% longer, synergizing with Malediction of the Gash. Next, we have the Korea skill, Raise Dead, where Sienna raises a company of skeleton warriors to ravage the enemy ranks. Now, while I haven't been able to get the exact health bars and damage numbers as I'm making this video, from what I've played, these bad boys can hold their own and are capable of handling almost anything in the game. They're also really cool to look at and follow you around everywhere you go. To make the best of the skeletons, Sienna has a brand new item known as the Icon of Death, which is this funny little voodoo skull that she carries around and has a few options. She can command the skeletons to attack a target, which is highlighted in a cyan color, and increases their damage by 60% for 8 seconds. This is done by pressing left click on an enemy. You can see this taken effect from the skeleton bar UI below, which highlights the eyes when the attack buff is active. I have a hunch that this may be triggered from the enemy simply being highlighted until it dies, so if anyone can confirm with me, let me know in the comments below. I tend to use this command on elites and anything within melee range as well as doing a quick input during hordes to help fend them off better. She can also command the skeletons to defend the target area, reducing the damage they take by 80%. This is done by holding right click, then left clicking at the area that you want to put them in. This will put the skeletons in a horizontal formation and lock them in place. On the skeleton UI, the arrows will shift to a shield to indicate that your skeletons are in defense mode. This is very handy for defending objectives and standing your ground, as the skeletons can eat damage for you, making it extremely useful in a bunch of scenarios like dealing with a storm vermin patrol, securing them in a footpath similar to Sienna's flame dash, where you can flame dash enemy paths, and getting some sustain if you're in a solo clutch moment, just to name a few. You can't split skeletons up into different areas though, like having three in one area and three in another, which I think would be something cool to have since the skeletons aren't necessarily broken or overpowered, so having freeform control is something to consider. Lastly, as mentioned before, she can release her skeletons, instantly ventilating 70% overcharge. I never found a use for this while running the new Soul Stealer staff as I was running Thermal Equalizer on it and since I was playing with bots, I opted to keep my skeletons alive for as long as possible before my cooldown goes off, but I can see it having synergy with other flame staffs and team comps if used properly. Next we have the two new weapons which are the Ensorcered Reaper and the Soul Stealer staff. For the sake of this showcase, I'm only using these two weapons and absolutely nothing else. The Reaper is everything I wanted in a scythe for this type of game, with incredible cleaving capabilities, decent single target damage, and a goofy special attack that while cool the first time you use it, doesn't really provide much splash damage outside of the weaker enemy pools. For weapon combos, I've learned to do heavy attacks against hordes, which does two wide sweeps back to back and repeats, so no need to block cancel there, followed by a push attack, a block cancel, and a light attack for armored and bosses. These have been my go-to combos and it works well. If there's another single target combo that's better than what I do, 
Let me know in the comments. This weapon can also be used across all of Sienna's careers, making it a great addition. The Soul Stealer Staff is an interesting weapon of necromantic magic, as I was a bit skeptical at first when I used her. The primary attack fires a cursed bolt that bounces between enemies, lighting them on fire and staggering them. This is where I was skeptical with this weapon because the primary fire is laughable at best and horribly weak, but I think it's done so on purpose so you can use it to proc Malediction of the Gash. For example, if you see a Chaos Warrior in front of you, you can use the primary fire to light him up for Malediction, followed by an attack command to further boost the skeleton's damage. So, in a way, it's a good thing. The star of this weapon, however, is a secondary attack, which lets you target an enemy and rip its soul, dealing massive damage. With the right properties and breakpoints, you could potentially one-shot almost every special enemy in the game, turning Sienna into a special sniper, should the team not have one. The range on this is unlimited and can be used through walls and objects, providing that you're within its line of sight. It also prioritizes specials and elites first over fodder enemies, which is great and makes for easy special killing. The staff is only available with this career and cannot be used anywhere else. I highly recommend running Thermal Equalizer to help with overcharge as it takes a lot of charge without it. Overall, a solid base of perks and weapons that I'm sure will please a lot of players and great fun to be had here. Now onto the talents. The level 5 talents are pretty straightforward here with Sienna being able to receive health from either damaging multiple enemies, killing blows based on the health of the slain enemy or giving health to allies when healing herself, alongside removing wounds. The level 10 talents are where things get interesting, such as Van Hal's Dance Macabre, which grants 12% attack speed when 4 skeletons are alive. Death Ascendant, casting spells grants 5% range power for 6 seconds and can stack 5 times. And Reaping, where critical attacks have 25% power and increased cleave. Sorry, unlimited cleave. Reaping was the talent that I wanted to mention as I think this fits the Life Taker perk perfectly, allowing you to take advantage of that critical chance and use it to smack hordes and bosses down. Van House is my go-to talent however, suitable for a melee necromancer build and complements the reaper well as the base attack speed on it is pretty slow. Death Ascendant I can see being used for ranged necro builds, especially with the beam staff. I found something goofy with the beam staff where all you have to do is cast the beam 5 times and boom, you have 5 stacks. Not sure if this is intentional or not, but cool to have it there nevertheless. The level 15 talents are the usual staggering talents, which are mainstay, smiter and enhanced power. I think for range builds, Enhanced Power would be the way to go to help you reach those breakpoints, whereas Mainstay and Smiter are dependent on your melee weapon. The level 20 talents consist of Cursed Blood. Critical attacks against enemies afflicted by the Malediction of Nagash cause them to burst, damaging nearby enemies based on the damage of the attack. A great splash damage talent that helps with patrols and groups, though part of me wishes that it could proc from normal attacks instead of crits, as I haven't really been able to notice it. Soul Harvest. The Malediction of Nagash rips the soul from targets that die. Harvesting 8 souls causes the next attack to be a guaranteed critical hit. Great talent when you can use your brain to count and determine when to use your critical hit, but outside of that, this talent didn't provide too much for me. And Withering Touch. On releasing a skeleton, all of Sienna's attacks for the next 15 seconds ignite enemies, causing damage over time. This is great for those that want to make full use of Malediction, as it essentially applies it to everyone you hit making it an awesome talent to use for those that want a risk slash reward playstyle. Cursed Blood was my go-to talent here. The level 25 talents are as follows. Spirit Leech. Killing an elite enemy restores 15% cooldown. This complements more with a ranged necro and withering touch to help you get your skeletons back faster. Curse of the Undeath. Casting raised death reduces damage inflicted on Sienna by 80% for the next 3 hits. This is without a doubt one of the strongest talents in the game and for a few reasons. Firstly, there's no timer on this, essentially giving you heavy armor indefinitely. Second, it scales off of enemy damage, so if a storm vermin hits you, which is one of the strongest enemies in Legend and Cataclysm, you can eat 80% of that attack, giving you a grace period of sorts. One can argue that this can become a crutch perk for those higher difficulties, but it honestly comes down to the player's skill. If you can confidently handle your own and have good melee prowess, think of it as having 3 shields where you want to be taking damage from hard hitting enemies. Stats can go down when you vent your overcharge, so keep that in mind. Lost Souls An underwhelming talent to say the least. When venting 20% overcharge, it unleashes a soul that steals health from a nearby enemy, restoring 2 temporary health. I'll be honest, I didn't bother to try this simply because of how underwhelming it sounded from the description. Though I am curious to know if it's 2 temp health per second until they die, or simply 2 health flat. 
I ran Curse of the Undeath for this one. Lastly, we have the make or break level 30 talents, which are Army of the Dead. Raised Dead now causes skeletons to remain for 20 seconds before decaying. While it does sound nice to have extra skeletons in the field for a short period of time, there's no other benefit that this brings other than extra clutter and more things for the enemies to deal with. And this is the one talent that I have a problem with. You can make this more fun by using a concentration potion and spawn up to 24 skeletons, which is one of the new challenges the DLC has, but there isn't much to say. I think there should be some sort of benefit to running this, like being able to spawn a few extra skeletons, albeit from 6 to 8, or have a reduced cooldown while the talent is equipped for more skeleton spawning. It would make the talent a lot more fun to use. Barrow Blades Skeletons now carry two cursed blades. When raised and when attacking, they ignite enemies, causing damage over time. Easily my favorite talent of the three, complementing incredibly well with Melee Necro and also Prox Malediction of Nagash, providing a good damage boost. Dread Seneschal Increases skeleton health and damage by 50%, allows the skeletons to charge on attack command, and defensive commands can be issued simultaneously. This is a great talent that offers both survivability and power at no cost, making them monsters at doing almost anything really. I ran Barrow Blades for the majority of my testing because I found that to be really fun, but Dread will probably be the better take, especially on Legend and Cataclysm. I just want Army of the Dead to be better, not strong, but better to where I can run it for fun. The Necromancer career feels more like a complementing career than providing a proper role, like a jack of all trades sort of thing, where she does a bit of everything. Excels at taking out hordes, specials and elites, can be both a backliner and frontliner depending on how you build her. Anything killing, she can do. I'd argue that she also has tank capabilities as well thanks to her skeletons being able to take 80% less damage as well, making her formidable for any team compositions. As mentioned before, the skeletons hold their own really well as they don't die as quickly and their damage is scaled for high difficulties, providing you put the Dread Center Skull Talon on. Even though I barely used it, even without it, they still hold well, enough that before you know it, you'll have another set of skeletons ready to be summoned. Her weapons are great tools of destruction and add variety to gameplay, particularly the Reaper since that can be used on any of Sienna's careers. Though the Necromancer may excel in almost every aspect, she doesn't excel at boss killing. I'm yet to try it on a true solo run, but I have no doubt that even with Malediction and Dread Santa Scale on, she would not be able to pump out as much boss damage as other characters can, so that's something to keep in mind. This shouldn't matter too much in 4 player games since you'll more than likely have a boss killer on your team. Some other negatives I already mentioned throughout the video, so I'll just pinpoint those again, which are... The Necromancer may very well be the best career that Fast Shark has ever made, as it ticks all the marks of a great career while adding extra to make it the most active and aware career ever. I think a high skill gap is to be said here, seeing that you'll need to be switching between commands and knowing when to use which in different situations. Prior to making this, I never was a Sienna fan due to not liking any of her classes, but after playing this one, I may have to turn that around and give her love. One final thing I forgot to mention before I close it off, the Icon of Death is in the potion slot but you can still hold a potion too. With that being said, I love this career and can't wait to see what people are going to cook up in the labs with this one. She has potential to work with almost any team comp and I just want to go out there and see what she can be made of with a 4 stack. I'm also yet to try her in Chaos Ways so that'll be an exciting time too. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.